Hi, welcome to uh, TFR Soft's presentation on solder joint thermal fatigue uh, life modeling. Uh, we're going to talk about the Engelmeyer IPC model in TFR Soft. I'm Dr. Alec Feinberg, founder of DFR Soft and author of the book Design for Reliability. So, uh, microelectronics uh, trends have certainly gotten more complex over the years, and uh, we have a lot of challenges in understanding solder joint reliability. There's certainly an um, uh, opportunity to get, uh, when you have uh, thermal mismatches that are going on between your package and your uh, circuit board, will cause stress on your joints, and there's a number of different failures. Here's a view of uh, some BGA cracks, uh, gull wing type of uh, cracks. And uh, so it can be challenging uh, from uh, that, this point of view. Now. Typically, uh, people run to do thermal cycling on their boards, and this is obviously uh, the best way to look at uh, the chance for thermal fatigue, but obviously uh, another data point would be to do a study, which doesn't take very long in DFR soft. It's another way of uh, saying that this part could be in trouble that you're concerned about, and uh, certainly it helps you do your homework. Uh, and, and does definitely gives you another reference and more uh, um, to build a case for actually doing a, a thermal, a lengthy thermal cycle test on your product. And so I think that it should be done all the time uh, for suspect parts. So um, it's very easy to do in DFR soft. You basically want to identify your CTE differences between your two materials and that will cause a stress. This is the uh, CT coefficient of thermal expansion between the different materials that you're concerned about. Uh, it puts a stress, which causes a strain to your solder joint in this case. And uh, for example, it's extremely easy to look at that CTE mismatch in DFR Soft. DFR Soft has a library uh, lookup uh, that you do, and uh, you'll do a pull down, and you can get the part type and the li uh, Concern, of, of concern and look at your CTE mismatch that is occurring um, and uh, it'll help you to do that. Uh, now the Engelmeyer model that we're going to be talking about to identify your cycle life uh, for your BGA that you're concerned about has, a, uh, has, has some pretty good um, results. There is uh, certainly a lot of information in the literature on the Engelmeyer model, and this is one of the studies that um, I thought I would show. And uh, it shows the different substrates uh, between FR4 and different materials uh, for um, uh, different types of BGAs that uh, this particular paper, here's the reference to it. And it shows pretty good results between the fatigue life uh, and the model results. So um, there you have it, and uh, uh, so it gives us a lot of uh, encouragement for using the Engelmeyer method. So the Engelmeyer IPC method uh, is shown here. Uh, we have our chip, and we have our, say, our FR4 board, and the difference in CTE will put a shear strain on the solder joint, and that uh, solder joint um, will, uh, over a number of thermal cycles, could cause cracking especially if it's large. So that's basically uh, a concern. And here's the model itself. It's not uh, too bad. Um, and uh, uh, the each each symbol is identified uh, much better in DFR soft. So we're, uh, we have a kind of a lack of time today, but I'll just point out that the solder joint height is uh, crucial. Um, and that is there's guidance for that in DFR soft. Obviously, the lar the larger your height, the more flexibility, so uh, you get longer cycle life. Now, this is the distance to neutral point, and it's the distance between your greatest distance between solder joints divided by two. Uh, so that's kind of, kind of called the distance to neutral point. So um, uh, if you know that distance, you just divide that by two for this number here. Here's your CTE mismatch between uh, your part and the board, uh, and your thermal cycle stress that the it's under. Now we've modified the model in DFR soft a little bit for underfill. That's the R value. 
Uh, now the C value here is given by this equation here, so that's uh, helpful to know that. And uh, so some of the definitions are over here. So um, we're going to use that in a sec. And now I want to bring your attention to underfill, which uh, needs to be um, put into the model, because underfill greatly increases the life if you're going to be using it. Or if you want to play a what-if game, uh, DFR Soft will help you if you don't have underfill. Uh, so there's guides for that, and I'll show you that in a minute. And this is corner fill versus uh, total underfill. Uh, so it's very simple to use. Here's with underfill and without underfill. Uh, we're going to see this in a minute and go into detail on that. Now, DFRsoft has a very good lookup table for CTEs, as I started to mention, and uh, you you uh, will have uh, you will enjoy using it if you uh, are, if you have a need to do the analytical study. So, uh, also. Um, DFRsoft, of course, has a, a very good accelerated testing page. So once you identify it, you can um, use uh, the Coffin-Manson expression or the uh, Norris-Landsberg model, for example, uh, thermal if you need it. So uh, there's a number of options for planning accelerated testing in DFRsoft. So let's go to DFRsoft and just let me show you this uh, area and. Uh, when you open up DFR Soft, you'll be on our uh, welcome page, and all the tools are listed up here. We're going to go to uh, the engineering tools first to look at the thermal area. So this is our menu page. All the tools are actually on this page. This is our lookup uh, open style menu. There's a drop down kind of uh, appearance that people are accustomed to in software. And the difference is it's just all opened up for you in DFR Soft. And it's a hyperlink index. Here's all your reliability tools. And when you do the accelerated testing for a thermal cycle, uh, you can look up. Here's the temperature cycle uh, models uh, for here. And the Norris Landsberg uh, model um, is uh, right here, modified Coffin Manson. So uh, a lot of different tools, field return, system reliability, uh, different kinds of accelerated testing and chi-squared uh, qual plans. Here's your quality tools, you watch sampling, uh, CPK, availability and sparing. Uh, and your engineering tools are the thermal analysis that we're going to talk about, uh, as well as your physics of failure library. So DFRsoft has a lot to offer for a very low price. So we hope you get a chance to at least uh, try it out go to uh, DFRsoft website uh, and um, try it out. And so we're going to click on the uh, thermal page and just give you a quick overview of that. Here's the thermal page. Uh, uh, starts off with thermal resistances um, and uh, calculate your different thermal resistances uh, and thermal uh, conductivity conversions and basic semiconductor junction temperature modeling, uh, mounted uh, heat sinking, uh, for that, for different junction temperature methods. And here's your Engelmeyer area right here. And then there's some other areas for different, for more junction temperature kinds of things and transient temperature uh, analysis. So let's look at the uh, Engelmeyer section. We can uh, zoom in on it a little bit. The, uh, it has different steps. So um, here's uh, for. This is the original section I was mentioning you with the pull-down library so you can identify your CTEs. Uh, we're going to look at, and, and you look at that and you choose it. Right now we're looking at a ceramic carrier and uh, an FR4 board uh, for that BGA. And that's uh, very much uh, the material similar to what I'm showing you for this oscillator right here that we discussed really quickly. This one now has underfill. And uh, going back to DFR Soft, um, so you will select those two, and you get your CTE uh, dip delta here, or you can put it directly in. So here's the uh, section that you're going to be looking at for your solder joint area. 
And uh, so the step one is to find your distance to neutral point. If you know the length and the width of it, DFRsoft will calculate that for you um, and give you results in meters because uh, we're putting everything in meters in the Engelmeyer model for uh, our use. And all, uh, or you can just calculate it yourself and or measure it. Your greatest distance to neutral point, the, dis the distance between the largest, uh, the, the, the corners typically for your solder joints. <clears throat> so um, for a rectangle, it will be like a hypotenuse divided by two. Uh, here's their steps here that are clearly laid out for each step. Um, and uh, so let me zoom in a little bit on the parameter entry area. So uh, the first parameter, the solder joint height, there's guidance. You can see the pop-up there, or, or you can measure it. Uh, so we provide guidance in DFR soft of what we expect that to be for different types of BGAs or carriers. Um, the distance to neutral point, as I mentioned, uh, you, that's your next entry. Uh, and your CTEs for your substrate in PPM, in this case, uh, it's a ceramic uh, subs aluminum part. Uh, it has a CTE of 6.5. Rather, uh, I'm sorry, the, yeah. And the CTE of the part, I kind of have these backwards. The substrate is uh, 15. Uh, and the, uh, the part itself is uh, 6.5 doesn't really matter in DFR soft it just takes the absolute value of the difference and the temperature cycling that you're doing uh, in this case was 145 degrees C uh, we're going to estimate the life of that for that test and whether you put in a 1 or a 5 whether you're using underfill or not uh, I'm sorry uh, in the value of the underfill so the defaults for underfill are between 5 and 8 in DFR soft uh, and the mean cycle solder temperature uh, and the dwell times uh, and there are some Engelmeyer constants that uh, DFRSoft provides you guidance to and then your results is just uh, right here it says it would be 820 cycles to failure it tells you uh, your risk 1.77% uh, for your shear strain and it explains that uh, and then if you're so if you're using underfill it would be 820 cycles I mean if you're not using underfill if you are uh, typically you put a 5 in there and um, it goes to uh, 4096 so uh, you get an idea uh, of your value and uh, depending upon uh, the stress that your part is under this is uh, for accelerated testing we would expect that to last about 4000 cycles and under accelerated test conditions so you can see it's very easy to use. Uh, there are instructions in DFRsoft that you can follow, pop-up instructions plus this video uh, that gives you the model information. Uh, in here, you can right-click um, and uh, um, say um, show the comment, and you can see it um, right in DFRsoft. Uh, as well as there's that study that we discussed a little bit and the slide is right next to it so you get some ideas of uh, the accuracy and some values that people are using in the literature. So thank you for listening to our uh, discussion on solder joint fatigue and how to model it in DFR soft.